Hey everyone, this is Geek Band here, finding guys with more content here on my YouTube channel. On top of, you know, being a squad, you know, creative partner. I, you know, I love squad, especially when it comes to Project Reality. But I, today, I have here a very special interview, just in time for the upcoming squads for that emergency. Scott Tobin, the composer for squad and other uh, off-world uh, stu- off uh, industries related projects. Hey man, thanks so much for having me on. So, Scott, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I kind of started off um, playing like uh, video games in the early '90s, late '80s, um, and um, yeah, just I, like my older brothers all played video games, and so we kind of started off playing games like Doom and Duke Nukem and um, Diablo, like all all these kind of like these old kind of DOS games, early Windows games, and I was always fascinated by the music um, in the games, and uh, that's that was kind of like my first. I don't know, stepping stone to, to to doing what I'm doing now is like I love. I always loved the music and the games. That was the one thing that kind of drew me to, to to video games was the music. Um, so um, yeah, like my my older brother, uh, he he kind of he was a composer and he still composes today. But uh, he used to compose songs and uh, on using MIDI with his computer, and uh, that was. I was fascinated. I used to watch them. I was like, "Oh, this is how this is how the guys do it. This is how you know Bobby Prince and Kevin Shielder and Matt Ullman. I had the, all these guys recorded music using their computer uh, and working with MIDI as well." And um, so I kind of started off with the with the MIDI thing. You know, it was kind of really early ad lib uh, sound blaster sounds. They weren't too good, uh, but they were cool. Uh, and um, so yeah, started off writing little songs, um, little rock songs, pop songs. Um, you know, using MIDI, and then uh, kind of just that kind of just kept that as a hobby um, for a long while. And you know, I was working in the cinema uh, for a long time um, in my you know late teens to early to late twenties, I think it was. Yeah, I was there for a while, quite a while, and I wasn't really happy there. And um, I, I, you know, I was doing a few, few things. My first kind of breakthrough thing was with was with Project Reality. A friend of mine, James, uh, introduced me to into project reality and uh i was like this this is this is like this is really cool it's like a first person shooter um and i was like okay and i get to do some music and you know and this and it's the first tunes I ever wrote with that for that game where the point eight zero point eight was the, yeah the soundtrack and so yeah i just i i was you know this, this, that was like my first my first kind of breakthrough um video game soundtrack and ever since then i'm like i want to keep doing this this is what i want, I, lo- I love to do and uh so I went back to college to to earn my my BA in music production, and I did that in Pulse College uh, in Wimble Lane in Dublin, uh, like a fast, like, amazing um, recording studio and um, and and college. So I did did my three year course there, finished it up, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I just that's that's kind of how I got started, and uh, I can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Scott. No worries. <laughs> now, speaking of which, for Project Reality, uh, as far how was it? What was it like working on like that? You know, that mod back in the day for Battlefield Two, and then eventually Armor Two. Yeah, I, I was amazing. Like I didn't really know what I was doing most of the time, <laughs> which was uh, kind of just experimenting with with different things. Like the, the like obviously the the point A soundtrack. I was like, I was like, I just kind of I was just messing around. Like it's war kind of sounds and it's like lots of drums and you know uh, lots of electronic music and there's a little bit of ambient music in there that which which kind of it gets kind of more um progressive in my music later on but um yeah it was it was great it was you know the team gave me a lot of leeway with the music so i was kind of able to do what i wanted really within circumstance and um yeah it was it was really fun and like i i actually used the mod games uh like like when Doom uh, was released, they used to make like little graphic mods and used to make levels in Duke Nukem 3D. So I was kind of from, uh, yeah, I was kind of familiar with with modding um, a little bit, um, uh, you know, with you know the 90s. So I was like, I, I was fami- familiar with how, how how it all works and that. Um, so yeah, and I played Battlefield the the first one, the 1942, and Battlefield 2 as well. So um, and I was familiar with the mods from the end, you know, with with um, Desert Combat and Pirates in State eighty two, and there was a few other ones that were really good. Um, I but uh, Desert Combat. <laughs> oh, I know it's great. It's great, and they, I think that 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 company made a a, a, a game, right? They, kind of they, they made a successor, a, but they were yeah, they did uh, Frontlines, Fuel of War, and then they did Homefront. Right, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Thing. 
But as yeah. such, when people think about mods, music often isn't a key area gamers really think about. What's your opinions mm. when composing music? You know, what's your take on it, basically? Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, like these games, like um, Project Reality and, and Squad, they're all multiplayer games. There's, you know, and, and there's no music within the game because obviously the the you know the VoIP, the talking to your squad mates, uh, kind of has priority over over music and, and i think music again would be would get in the way of that of those moments in the game where you're talking to your squad members and it just be it'd be it'd be hey why you would be able to talk to people um so in a sense it, you know for these type of games um my music kind of is just it's it just sits in the main menu and it it, it kind of you know it, it sets the mood and the atmosphere of the game um but you not know, to say that it's not important i don't know it's like for any game like even single player games that i play i'm like if the music is is getting in the way, I, I turn it off. I'm like gone. Um, I I I think music should on, should really be in the background. Now this depends on the game. Um, it it should be just atmospheric enhancing. It should just kind of suck you into the game, into the world. Um, Essentially buttering uh, players up, you know. Yeah. Them like a taste, like a taste test. Like this is like right. We're we're setting the mood basically. Right. Yeah. And like I don't know, there's other games that do it differently. Like you know, like the Doom, the new Doom soundtrack by by Mick Gordon is just absolutely madness. Oh, oh it's and it's amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it, it, and like you know, and you know, we got to thank Bobby Prince because if it wasn't for Bobby Prince, the Doom sent his Doom soundtrack wouldn't sound like that. Um, the original, you know, the original Doom composer, Bobby yep. Prince. Um, so, but yeah, that, and that game is is really about the music. Like, it's so important. Um, so there, there is games that do that well, but you know, you know, a lot of games like you know Jeremy Soul and uh, the the Polish composer from Witcher Three. I can't pronounce his name, uh, but uh, he does a great job of of of, of creating this ambient. St- background music and it just sits there and it's just it's wonderful that that for me is really important but um but yeah for games like you know the games that i've worked on uh you know with newer projects coming up that i'm working on i'm i'm, I'm finally getting to do some in-game music so that's kind of cool but uh yeah it, it's um you know it, it's 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 definitely tough because i love i love music but if the game requires you know not to have music that's that's totally cool it makes sense because i'm a gamer as well so i know when not when there shouldn't no be there should be not any music you know in the game so yeah as uh, as such you know with project reality how it grew from humble beginnings into its own mm-hmm. you know game of squad as its spiritual successor what was the inspirations and the focuses that you put into when composing for that game all right that, that's a great question so you know, I started off um, with the squad team in 2014, late 2014, I think, and and they you know they kind of trusted me with with a lot of music because I, you know with, with my history with them with, with Project Reality, um, so excuse me, um, I I kind of just started off with a few little ideas, and I think at one stage I kind of had this cello motif, uh, I you know the do na na na, and they loved it. They're like, oh, that's cool. That's that's that sounds like the the squad the squad sounds. So I kind of went with the cello, and um, a lot of ambient music. Um, squad features a lot of ambient music, and uh, Brian Eno is one of my influences. Um, I love his music for airports. Um, you know, it's just this ambient like vista of like just sounds and it's all really subtle it's just it's beautiful and it's not and it's atmospheric it does, it's not in the forefront it's really in the background and i and, and that that fascinates me so uh i kind of spent a lot of time with with sounds creating sounds and moods and uh my friend farah um i've worked with her quite a, quite a good bit um uh back back then and now actually but uh we, uh, I got her to, to record um, the Lost Squad soundtrack, and that was pretty much in one take. We went in, in, into the recording studio because I was there as a student, and we, I just went, click record on the on the on the Neve console, and then she just she just sang it, and that, that was it. It was one take. Done. <laughs> it's like it's like literally like done. Shut it down. Yeah. Let's get Shut this it down. going. Like <laughs> call, call it a day. It's good. Yeah, it was amazing, and uh, we did a few little bits and pieces and that, and. Yeah, and I think I did a few other little. Uh, uh, I did a few songs in there as well with trumpet. Um, a lot of solo instruments. Like I, I find that it, you know, with a, with a small budget, with smaller games and indie games, uh, you just don't have the budget for for big orchestras. So a lot of the time, um, I'd be just getting in a solo um, um, 
musician they'll come in they'll record their part and i'll just dub it on top of everything that i have and just layer it so you know with squad it's the cello actually i, I was a quartet actually i had a quartet that came in and they they put their their part over the squad music over the squad uh, sample library sounds that i had um, and and again same with beyond the wire i had um um you know i had I'd written that music and then and then a contact obviously with, with things how they are in, in the current times i, I contacted um, an illum pipes player and um he's he's living in galway um in the west of ireland and he he just i gave him the sheet music he's like yeah i can record this from home i was like awesome so i did that and he just recorded the music and i got um uh, Moylan Brunach, she a singer that that did some vocals for me. And she again, she, I think she did that in like one take, pretty much. She did the 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 soldiers poem in in, in one take, and I kind of just I kind of just went with from there. But yeah, like I, I don't know what I was talking about. Kind of kind of lost track. But yeah, that was that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much it there. No no worries, Scott. No worries, Scott. <laughs> As such, you know, were you surprised? To find out how far and how big Squad essentially blew up, and will you will we be seeing more songs uh, featuring your works in the game? Yes, yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's it's amazing with Squad. Like you know, when when it was when we first did the um, the announcement trailer, just like it just kind of just. It, it, it's exploded like since you know four four or five years ago i i can't believe i mean the player base the community is amazing um it, it's incredible it's it's come a long way and uh, you know you get the team gets emails and and you see people on reddit saying like you know this game's helped them with their with their anxiety and stuff and because they're, they have to talk to other players in the game and that's that kind of thing is just amazing and you know, I, I get a few emails from from vet from veterans saying that you know they they brought their music with them to to their to their um to where, wherever they were going and it kept them it kept them kind of going for for, for that time and that's incredibly humbling. I, I just you know I, I'm it's amazing. Like I get these guys coming up, these guys you know they're playing squad, but they're also you know they're also you know serving their country and it's 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 it's, it's incredible really and and like it's grown. The game's grown so 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 far beyond that i i had no idea it was going to get this big um and uh yeah and like it's and this this, this you know i can't wait for whatever it has in the future is i'm gonna get more and more projects as they come in with them um, with you know postscriptum and and just up to date with um uh, with uh beyond the wire i'm just like i'm just really excited to hear like more of your work and stuff like that because it's again oh thanks like, man like being you know <laughs> like being a huge you know player back in the day with project reality hearing your work with that and then you know in squad and with other titles you know it's always excited like okay what will he do ne next and will there be a cello involved so and, and that's what i love about squad because your music felt very grounded you know it didn't feel mm -hmm. like it was like all out like balls to the you know balls to the wall call of duty or something right. like that with like an electric guitar you know yeah because like with games like doom with like the heavy metal music it works with that but like with a game right. like squad i love it like the atmosphere the groundedness, mm -hmm. the the subtleness sometimes, like like you were we were talking about this before, like how you described it like a painting, basically. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like it, it's um, it, it's it's amazing with Squad. I just I felt like because the the gameplay is so hectic and, and chaotic at times, not all the time. Um, that I was like, I, I need to make this kind of very subtle and just and just like yeah, as you as I, as I was saying to you, like as it's like a painting. You're just putting little bits on and you know you're just just every every so often a little bit of color in there and there and and it's i use a lot of textures in in the squad center there's a lot of like higher frequency like bowed sounds and there's a lot of lower kind of rumbling ambient sounds um and a lot of sounds that are that are from you know that kind of sound they should be from that area if it's like if it's a middle eastern -y type of feel i'll have that kind of um you know as i said with fire she sang some um uh, arabic kind of phrases and um I, I like to kind of set the player in, in a you know in an area where they kind of go okay I can, I can relate this 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 seems like it should be from that area but um i definitely avoided the rock distortion guitars drums for, for the most for the most part some of the newer songs have a little bit more energy because i think some of the guys in, in squad wanted a little bit more energy and i was like that's cool but uh yeah i avoided for the most part like a lot of the distortion guitars this is for the in-game uh, in-game music um because it just felt like yeah it just felt like the right thing to do it felt like not uh, not a lot of other games are doing that they're all like 
you know, I was playing um, COD 4, and it was, it's a great soundtrack, but it's it's all like, and it's kind of like, ah, oh, that's been done before. I'm like, I want to do something different, you know, and I kind of went with that very lighthearted, um, very ambient, um, and of course, you know, these, these games are all, the games I've worked on are, are all multiplayer games, so there's, there is no stories, you know, in, in the game, so I kind of just come up with my own, like I, I think I put myself in the in the, in the soldier's shoes uh, or boots, I suppose would say, uh, and I kind of think about like, okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm going out to tour, and what would it be like, you know, sitting at dusk, um, you know, with my with my with my buddies, and like, you know, having all these sounds and this atmosphere, and and then you have you go back home to to your loved ones, and you know, and like family. Uh, that's a kind of a running theme in a lot of the music, especially in Squad and Project Reality, and, and actually, actually, all the scores for for the off-world uh, family. It's like, yeah, you know, family is the kind of key thing. Family, home, um, returning home. Uh, you'll you'll probably see that a lot in my music. You'll probably see it a lot of the, in the titles. There's like home does make um, an appearance quite a lot, uh, and that's definitely intentional. Um, so yeah, I kind of just try to create my own little story in the music, uh, so to speak. So, with this, you know, we got you know, other titles you worked on, including Postscriptum and Beyond the Wire 2, different games because Postscriptum is World War 2 and Beyond the Wire is World War 1. Was it difficult to capture the feel and the themes for their respective eras? Yeah, yeah, it was it was different. It was different and difficult, actually. Um, with with Postscriptum, that was kind of my first, my first venture um, with wor working with a real orchestra. And um, uh, that was that was an incredible experience. That so it kind of started off with me writing a little theme for the Periscope guys, and I, I was talking to Roman, and I I did like a little thing on the piano, uh, like it took me like ten minutes, probably not even ten minutes, and I sent him the wave on. He's like, "That's it, that's the one, that's the, that's the post theme," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> So uh, I finished it up. I, I did like a um, uh, a MIDI mock-up with, with my sample library instruments, and um, I, I showed the guys at Offworld, and they're like, "Oh, that's that's cool, yeah." And one of the guys is like, oh, "Man, you need to get this done with a with a real orchestra." And I was like, "Yeah, that would be that would be nice." So um, I went back to Roman, uh, the CEO of Periscope, and I was like, "Should do you want to get this done with an orchestra? I think it be it might be cool." And he was like, "Well, how how much?" And, uh, <laughs> it ain't so, cheap. It ain't cheap. It ain't, <laughs> it, uh, it's not gonna be cheap. But uh, yeah, no. Um, but we we found a place, and, and it was fairly, you know, fairly, 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 you know, cheap considering the, the prices. But uh, at the time, he was living in Budapest, and he we actually found a place in Budapest that does these sharing sessions. So they have, um, you know. Um, an orchestra come in, in the morning and you share a session with like 12 other composers and throughout the day they just record music so we got like a little 25 minute slot and we had to record nine minutes of music which is just a crazy amount of music for the time that we had um but uh yeah so i i i visited uh budapest on the the paddy's day weekend and we, i went over and visited roman and his girlfriend and we just yeah we did we did like a little um interview and then we uh, did the um, did the session. It turned out great. Like I mean, there's a few things I would have changed now, uh, looking back at it. But I, I learned a, a, a crazy amount. Um, but uh, that was it was a very orchestral, uh, very kind of reminiscent of. I mean, I didn't really play. A lot of people say like, "Oh, it sounds like this and it sounds like this." I'm like, I never actually played those games. Like, uh, I, I was going for the very uh, British because obviously it's just based on the, the British company, and uh, it, you know it's very very woodwind heavy. Uh, and um, it's something that I was kind of outside my comfort zone a little bit with because I'm very used to I'm very strong but my area is is more ambient with strings and brass and stuff that's kind of my so like I was doing woodwinds I was like oh this 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 is going to be a little bit you know this is a little bit different so uh, oboe was the kind of the center the center melodic instrument in that in that and um, I was going yeah it's just a very British feel I can't remember there was like a um, a very regal uh, British song that I kind of used as a, as inspiration um it's 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 gone out of my head um yeah i can't remember the song but it's it's an old it's an old kind of hymn um and um yeah so i kind of went with that it's very uh this is kind of regal kind of like very patriotic british kind of vibe to it um so yeah i kind of kind of went with that for postscript and then with beyond the wire it was it was very much different it was um 
I so my my great grandfather fought in in World War One with this cyclist uh, cyclist corp, and uh, he he uh, he died nineteen sixteen, I think. Yeah, nineteen sixteen, age nineteen, and I kind of only found this out recently enough um, from my my parents, my dad, and uh, I was like, "Wow, this is this is amazing!" And I found all his birth certificate and all his documentation, and all his medals um, that he got, and I was like, "Wow, this is incredible!" This 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 guy, you know, this guy fought, you know, for his for his country because Ireland was a part um of of england at the time and of course in, in 1916 we were having our own troubles ireland wanted to be separate separated from england so but uh it, it, it's incredible you know and i'm like this guy was 19 and you know i'm here i'm like you know in my 30s and i'm like in my comfort my own home writing about these these memories and this, this story of of my grandfather my great grandfather um in 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 the war in this in this horrific war horrible horrible war and it really hit me. I was like, "Whoa, this this is really heavy." And I was like, "I I kind of wanted to go with the you know with the uh, very heavily influenced with the Irish instruments, so the Illan pipes, uh, which means elbow pipe in in English. Um, that was the kind of the center um, melodic instrument, and that um, in the Beyond the Wire soundtrack. So I took I took the Illan pipes, and I and I started adding more and more Irish instruments. And I was like, Do "You know what? I'm gonna more, I'm gonna get an Irish singer to sing some Irish." Irish uh, lyrics. I wrote some um, lyrics in in uh, uh, in English, um, and I took inspiration from a from a poem from an Irish soldier, and I, I, this lovely this lovely poem, and I kind of just took inspiration from it, and um, I had it translated into uh, Gaelic, like Irish the Irish language, and uh, I had a a, a singer, Moylan Brunnock. She she's a wonderful singer, and she and she did a wonderful uh, like a, it's called Shan Nos. It's a type of singing, in, in it's like a highly ornamented um, singing in the Irish um, language, and it's just it's beautiful. And uh, it that that was the kind of the basis for um, the soldier's poem. And um, I, I wrote a little piece, a little very kind of ambient open piece, and like like with Lost Squad, with with the Farrah, I kind of used um, a female singer because for some reason I don't know what it is. It's just it it, it draws people um, and like. For, you know, I, for some reason, like Farah's voice, very innocent, and the same with Moylan's, it's very innocent, it's very like moving and touching, and it's it's just very gentle, and it has this kind of like contrasting. I don't know. It's it's like I don't know what it is. It just has this like like it's meant it's, to be there. Like it's, it's meant to be there, right? Yeah. It, it's just it's meant to, it's meant to be there, and um, yeah. So I, I I got and she sang over that and. That was kind of the basis for the Beyond the Wire soundtrack. So I kept on the on the kind of the the kind of Irish um, instruments and the Irish kind of vibe, that kind of thing. And it just it kind of just went that way. And and the guys the guys didn't tell me what to do. They're like Redstone, all the companies I worked before in in these these this this family of games, they've all been amazing. They're like just just go for it. And they were not once were like. Oh no no don't do that don't do that you know they were like go for it like you you know you know you know what to do so I just spent you know that most of this year just um, contacting these musicians around the world because um, we're not able to record together and thankfully it, it came out it came out pretty well and and um, yeah it's it, it's it's definitely the Beyond the Wire soundtrack was definitely di- it hit me a little bit more differently it was a little bit more closer to me because you know if, I mean I never met them of course or or, or that that just they're so long gone now but it's um, but it's they're, they're still it's in my it's in my blood and I, I you know I just for some reason it just it really the whole centre just came out to me and I just I don't know I just got really involved and I was like I was and I was learning about Irish music as well because traditional Irish music isn't in my in my family it's, I'm a jazz like I, I listen to a lot of jazz music I play jazz drums and uh, jazz is my background so I had to learn a good bit about um, Irish music which was amazing as well um, to learn about to learn about new music and new styles and. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah, it's always it's always crazy, like the inspirations and what you draw from. Mm. You know, like mm-hmm. it's like for like for me too. Like, like when I like I'm finding out things in my about my family history. Like, like I found right. out that like recently too. Like my you know I had family that fought in World War One because I knew that my, oh. my family fought in World War Two on both sides of the war. Really awkward. Um, Whoa. Yeah, it's an interesting, you know, like, my family's part of a lot of wars, but it's, like, it's really crazy, like, when you see, like, when you, f- like, find these things out, and then you, like, it, because it's, like, it's a part of you, it's a part of your family, it's a part of your life, and you tr- right. incorporate them in your work and your passion and stuff like that, and, you know, with that, you know, 
Scott have to say both you know the both your you know musical tracks for Postscript and Beyond the Wire definitely hit the nail like you definitely hit your mark right oh, there. Oh, thank buddy. you so much, man. I appreciate that. It's, it's yeah, it's so nice of you to say. And with that last question, Scott, what do you mm-hmm. have to say to any new composers out there wanting to get into making musical works, whether it be games, movies, TV shows? What would you have? What do you say to them? Um, it's, I mean, it's it's a tough industry to get into. It's it like you just have to be practicing. I mean, I've been practicing since I was really really young, um, writing songs, on, you know, doing the MIDI thing and. Just it just requires a lot, a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of you know, a lot of a bit of luck as well. But there's, you know, you just got to keep working at it and um, find your sound. Like, like I, I, I mean, I'm kind of guilty. I, I definitely, I love like you know, there's a few producers and composers that I love, and I definitely draw a lot of influences from a few of them. And I, and I have up until kind of recently enough where I'm like, I need to find my sound, um, and that is the that's the most important thing. Like find. Find your sound and hone in on it. Don't don't try to copy somebody. Don't you know? Don't hone in on one genre either. Um, but it's yeah, perfect, definitely find your yeah. find your find yeah exactly and find find your sound. Like you know, there's so like there's so many amazing composers, but there's they all have a different vibe. Um, you know, like Thomas Newman, who's done like you know Shawshank Redemption, uh, Road to Perdition. He's he's done he's done so many movies. He has a very particular sound. He does he does that one thing so well, and he doesn't he doesn't try to do anything else. He's just he's so good at it, and and that's what he sticks to. And I love him for that because he's like that's I'm one you know. And I and at the start of my career, I was like oh, I love Thomas Newman. I want to write some more kind of Thomas Thomas Newman type of stuff. And I was like no, I need to find my own my own thing, and. Um, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's really important. Like, find your sound is, is definitely one thing, and get into the community, get into modding. Uh, modding is 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 really cool. Go into IndieDB, um, one, any of these kind of modding sites, um, ModDB as well, and uh, just see if there's any work. If there's any work going, uh, join Facebook groups, um, uh, get on SoundCloud, start putting your music out there. Um, you know, get, and again, you know, when someone comes to see your music. Uh, they want to see how well you can do certain genres and that, and that's something I I don't I, my my soundcloud is just all uh, you know my own you know squad and postscript and stuff and all that. So I I actually do at some stage need to start writing some some kind of some different music. But uh, yeah, and, and like a formal training, like go to college, do like do um, a music production or a sound engineering course. Um, having your music sound professional is very important. Um, having it mixed well is is important. Um, you know, it, it, no one's gonna want to listen to your music if it's mixed really poorly and you know, and it's it's distorting and there's there's all sorts of mad stuff happening. Um, it, it's it, like the my course definitely helped me. Um, it, it, you know, I learned I learned a crazy amount. Um, in college, learning about all sorts of stuff and I, that I didn't like that I didn't know. I was like, oh, I'm do, I was doing this wrong the whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, and just and like you know, just be, just keep at it. You just you know, just be 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 stubborn. I I, I was told loads of times when I was a kid that like don't should not go for that kind of job because you're not going to get it. I was like, no, well, no, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to prove you wrong. Um, it, it's a hard industry to crack, and like there's more and more composers now. A lot of people have the ability to to make music now, and it's different now than it was um, back you know, even before me. And um, yeah, just yeah, just just you have to be passionate about it, um, and also get into sound design. Um, sound design and music kind of go hand in hand, uh, and like you'll all, you'd always see uh, the composer often doing sounds for for games. So um, that's 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 one thing that you'll see a lot. So definitely, there's two areas. If 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 you think that you're stronger at doing sound design, go, go start you know honing in on your sound design um skills and 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 do that but definitely my my biggest advice is do your do your own thing like fi- figure out your sound figure out what what you want to do and you know and just yeah just go for it <laughs> again scott thank you again <laughs> so much for uh a lot for coming here for this interview and for those of you guys who don't know scott's works will be down right in the description box below check out the spotify youtube channel website all that dandy stuff scott dude Woo! if we ever meet each other first rounds on, first we and will, second oh, is on me oh hell man yeah we got we gotta do that we'll have a few guinness 
Oh, <laughs> will there be some Guinness tea? or whiskey? I don't mind. Both actually. <laughs> both, maybe, both, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll do both. Yeah, yeah. It's like both. Both. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, enjoy. We're in, for, we're in for a rough night. Oh, oh, hell yeah! It's it's the best of nights and stuff like that. If it ends in a fist fight, it was a good night. <laughs> but again, thank you so much, Scott. And for those cheers, guys, man. Thank you so much. And for those of you guys out there, make sure you check out his work. It's definitely really awesome work. Also, don't forget, I will have new content coming out there shortly, including some squad stuff and squad's fifth anniversary is coming up. Where will you be? So other than Ooh. that, folks, be safe, be awesome. This is Geek Band here with Scott. We're out. Stay geeky, my friends.